I'm Don. This is the Church of Making Your Day. And incoming is my beautiful little uh, boa constrictor, <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> and we're wrapping up Revelation, last book. Never thought we'd get there, but we did it. Um, okay, let's open up in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this book of Revelation, the book of your revealing, Lord God. Not a book to be hidden or not studied, a book to be studied and understood. We thank you that you've given us wisdom and understanding. And we just pray, Lord God, that you'd open up all of our minds, our hearts, our spirits, our souls to receive your word, to receive that understanding that'll save our eternal lives. So bless this time right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Here we go. Okay, 22.1. And he showed me a pure river of the water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. What kind of water? H2O? No. The water of life. Remember when the uh, Samaritan woman, the woman at the well, that no Jew was ever to talk to? Much less a Samaritan, not a woman. Not a Samaritan woman, right? Jesus Christ talked to her. His disciples were shocked that he'd be talking to her. What did he tell her? You don't, you come and get water from this well. I think it was Jacob's well. You come and your people come to get water from this well. But if you drink of me, the rivers of life, the river of eternal life, you will thirst no longer. Which, of course, she's always going to have to physically drink water. But he's talking about his spirit, right? I think that's what this water is like. And it's very significant because we are in eternity right now. So uh, just remember that um, the second earth age is past. The millennium is past. And right. now we observe an eternity. And we don't have uh, much of it, but the significance of water of life that Jesus mentioned to this Samaritan woman right. um, ju just in front of us, in front of John's eyes. Through John's eyes, we can see it, how it's coming from the throne of God and basically uh, pouring out of it and available to everybody who has entered the kingdom. Right. Okay, number two. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life who's the tree of life Jesus Jesus Christ who's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil Satan what did God say in, Re in Genesis uh, I think it was Genesis 2 the day you eat of that you shall surely die you sinned and you're gonna die right right and yielded, oh, okay, and was there a tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and, be, and yielded her fruit every month for twelve months? Almost sounds like to me there's still going to be some type of time system because it's talking about months, right? We didn't leave those behind in the second earth age, it looks like, right? They bear twelve manner. So what would that be, different fruits? and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for healing of the nations. So this is some tree, right? This is a tree that gives life. This is a tree that brings healing. This is a tree that heals any kind of boredom that would begin to ever set in, right? Kind of a medicinal tree. But again, we in an in eternity right now where there's no place for evil, right? So just right. think about it. It's a high energy of vibration, including these beautiful waters and everything that surround this water, including souls of people that um, uh, surround, uh, surround by energy of God. Right. Hey, it's as good as it's going to get. As good as it's going to get. Hey, yes. forever. Forever. And there shall be no more curse but the throne of God and the Lamb of God shall be in it and his servants shall serve him 
pray that that's us, right? His servants. And they shall see his face, the face of God that no one's ever seen in the physical. And they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. Oh, it's going to be marked on their foreheads in, in what's in your forehead, your brain, how you think, what you believe. So we talk about basically your mind. If you remember, right. everybody wonder why we use only 5% of our brains, right? Right. And well, here you are going to use all 100% of it. Right. So more power to you, that is given. Right. And again, the comment, see his face. Uh, There's so many people wonder why they never saw God and never saw his face. And even Jesus said, if you see me, you, you see God. Right. So um, the first time uh, in, in the entire Bible, basically, it, uh, that God show, show his face, uh, the ability, because remember, we in a spiritual dimension right now, and our ability to see, uh, can, I want to say physically, but it's really spiritually. Right. Uh, however, if you, if you wish, you can say uh, physically on the way, uh, to see God and to see His face. So what is what an incredible time! Right, to be there with God, man with well not man right spirit man yeah, <laughs> with man. God finally finally mm -hmm. after thousand, however long man with God Almighty. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And five. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle neither light of the sun for the Lord God giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever his Shekinah glory right mm -hmm. is going to light everything though so there's a verse that says there shall be no no more shadow of turning right mm -hmm. remember we talked about straight up high noon you ain't got much of a shadow do you Eight o'clock at night in the summertime, sun's just going down. How's your shadow? 100 feet? 200? I don't know. It's kind of very interesting, you know, like I always wondered like, okay, one third of our life, we have to sleep. We have to. You can't function, function without sleeping. You can't function without getting this energy back for you to continue next day. So can you imagine this uh, incredible amount of energy that basically feeds from God himself gives you power, give you energy to exist all the way through. You know, at night, you don't have to go sleep. Right. Right? You can continue enjoying <laughs> and flourish with God in this incredible energy and eternity and enjoy this incredible presence of beauty that He created in the most perfect manner with no evil, no negativity, no anything that possibly can darken that to be present. That's right. How beautiful that is. You know, Beastie Boys say, you got to fight <laughs> for your right to party. No more. No more fighting for the right. It's just automatic, eternal. It's automatic. Forever. I like this. Automatic. <laughs> automatic. Yeah. Hey, if you're having a bad time, it's your own fault. That's for sure. All right. Five, baby. Yeah. And just, oh, no. just one more thing to say. For the Lord God giving them light and then shall reign forever and ever. Right. Yeah. Super heavy. Six. Oh, six. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. So it sounds like there's still some work to do. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, you know, it says that if you read this book, you'll receive a special blessing. I just want to say that. Yeah. Yep. yep. You're it. So why don't any preachers preach it? They don't want to receive a special blessing. They don't get it. First they don't all, understand it at all. First of all, let's notice that the word written in red, the same as we uh, read Matthew, where right. everything was in red. That's Christ's words directly. 
So that's his word directly. And what he's saying again, um, bless is he that keepeth the saying of the prophecy of this book. What book? This book of Revelation. Right. Reveal to us. Reveal to us the, uh, the incredible future that ahead of us. Well, because you have to also understand, if you remember, Christ said that, and it's going to be given to you according to your beliefs. So to strengthen your belief, why it was given to John? Why it was so important for us to see this little sneak peek of the future, what is ahead of us? Well, just to strengthen our belief, to make us more um, powerful to go through those tough, tough times that are going to come, to understand what we're going to face, and the end of the story to give us a little sneak peek of this incredible, beautiful eternity that we're all going to enjoy together. Right. Eight or nine? Eight. And I, John, saw these things, and I heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Wrong. But it's interesting. The reason why he fell down and started worshiping, so you have to understand how overwhelmed he was was right. um, understanding that this is it, right? And according to Arnold Murray, at this time, John is coming back to 96 years after, after Christ. Um, from, He's coming back to the earth again, from, from his where spiritual, he was. Because remember, he was taken in his spirit, right? right? So he comes back to his physical body, and you can only imagine how overwhelmed he was after experiencing all this and giving this honor to be able to write this book and give this word to you for you to um, have this little slim, little understanding. Right? right, what is going going to happen, and he, John, have this incredible honor from God and respect the way he, uh, he is as he is to deliver it to you. Right, right. You know, it's like incredible. have you ever noticed sometimes uh, a shower glass mm -hmm. will be rippled? Yeah. So you really can't see through it. Right. Right. That's the whole idea. Right. Privacy in your shower, no matter what. Okay, that's how we see the heavenlies. That's how we see spiritual things, okay? Dimly, we know it's there by faith. We know God's there. We know Jesus Christ rose from the dead. We know he forgives us our sins. We know we're Christians. But other than that, right? You know, we got a long ways to go as far as spiritual goes. We see through a mirror, uh, a glass dimly, but then, we will see clearly. She said we use 5% of our, they used to say 10%, now they say five. You use 5% of your brain, right? There, you'll have 100% pure recall. You'll know as you are known. You'll basically know everything. You won't wonder about anything about the universe, you'll know. It'll just be there. How awesome is that? Forever. Yeah, and it's another thing uh, why God treats us like uh, basically children, because this is uh, very much as uh, think you're a teacher, right? And you're in school, and you have this kindergarten kids that's so excited, is super happy, and um, excited about all these things coming to them and this life and new things every day. However, they not aware; they only see a slight uh, slice. Um, little slice of this future life that come to them. Right, a little piece. A little piece. So the same like God looking down on us and giving us this a little sneak peek, but it's not everything. So we're like truly kids for It's him. almost nothing. Truly kids for him, like little kids that trying to learn, understand, and he appreciates that. Like you would appreciate like your child learning and succeeding in, um, in his study. Right. And the same what we're doing here right now, study um, our Father Word and uh, trying to be perfect in His eyes and trying to follow His direction. Right. You know, it's like I heard an um, analogy or story mm -hmm. about uh, three blind men, right? Mm -hmm. 
and one blind man goes up to an elephant and gets a hold of his tail. Mm-hmm. Oh, and what is oh an elephant? Mm-hmm. It's like a snake. Mm-hmm. An elephant is like a snake. Why? Because he got a hold of the tail. Right. Right. And then one blind man grabbed one of his um, feet, legs, call it what you want, right? Uh-huh. Oh, an elephant is like a tree mm-hmm. because this feels like a, a stump, mm-hmm. right? And I can't remember what the nose was. <laughs> one guy got a hold of the nose, right? And yeah. he came up with something, right? Oh, an Trump. elephant. Trunk. But a what? Trunk. Yeah, the trunk. Uh-huh. Now, not nose. An <laughs> elephant's trunk, okay? Uh-huh. And he got a hold of the trunk and he, he said something about it. But is an elephant like a snake? No. Is an elephant like a stump? No. Is an elephant like anything else you can come up with? Elephant's an elephant, but they couldn't see that. Right. Why? They were blind. They were physically blind to the physical object that they were trying to figure out. That's how we are in the spirit, right? Yeah. We can think this, we can feel this, we can, but we're still kind of shooting in the dark, right? Through the glass dimly. Okay. And and of course, as we go in through the entire Bible, uh, just remember that every single book of Bible reveals something else to you that you didn't know before. It's like um, when I used to be a teacher and I had my students ask me all the time, they said, why do we need to know physics laws? Why do we need to know uh, algebra's equations? Why do we need any of this if we're never going to use it in our lives? So basically, the answer is it takes you on a different, it takes your mind in a different level of understanding and comprehension on energy vibration, if you wish. And as you remember, the energy of God is the highest possible vibration you can achieve. So this book is simply taking your mind in a different level. And with every single book reveals you more and more understanding what God is expecting from you and how can you to, to enter the kingdom of, of God, to be in his presence. So it's not just one book, it's all of them opening up different part of your mind and taking you on a different level of comprehension. Right. So that is what important. Right. So it's not the stories, the historical story, what we learn, but your mind in every single word, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, because this, look at, we we'll look at the verse and then we see the key word of it. And suddenly there's a ha moment, right? There's a light bulb going on. Why? Because you did not notice that before. Right. And suddenly you take that verse and you connect this verse with the Bible in connection of New Testament and Old Testament. And it's all played together in this beautiful revealing process of the God dividing plan that he wants for you to know. Because in other words, how you can get there if you do not know where you're going? You right. have to know it. And that's basically what we're doing right now. We're opening up an uh, incredible, powerful um, world of God. Right. And you know, Revelation now, I, this just came to me, okay? Mm-hmm. Speaking of Revelation, okay? Mm-hmm. It's like, she is a science, she has a science what? Degree. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't, okay? She has a math, obviously she's got math degrees because she teaches physics. I don't. I was great at math. I'm still good at math, dividing, multiplying, um, uh, fractions, numbers. But man, when it came to pre-algebra, forget it, right? Added a axiom of what? X plus Y equal, forget it, right? So I have a tendency, right, to just kind of like, ah, who needs it? Put it on the shelf. I don't need it. Why? Because I don't get it, right? How about the book of Revelation? What of 99.9% of all preachers, priests, reverends, what have they done? They've shelved it. Why? They don't get it, right? Thank God, God reveals the book of Revelation. What does Revelation mean? Put it on the shelf. You don't need it. You're going to get raptured away. No, you need it for your salvation. And you get an extra blessing, a special blessing. After this chapter, we've gone through this, expect some, hot ble- expect some awesome blessings. You know why? They're coming. They're in the mail. Keep us the saying of the prophecy of this book. Right. 
Right. And nine. nine. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. Don't bow to men. There are religious people on earth um, that hierarchy, reverent, holy reverend people, they consider themselves not really much um, holy or reverend about you if you think that way about you, right? I'm Don. You know when I introduce myself? I'm Don, right? I'm not Reverend Don. I'm not Holy Reverend Don. I'm not Super Duper Whammy Don. I'm Don. This is Natasha. Leave it at that. Keep it simple. There are some religious people that want you to bow to them. They want you to kiss their ring. Hey, don't bow. You can tell him to bow to you. <laughs> and you know what he can kiss, right? But not the ring. Forget that kind of people. Stay away from them. They're self-righteous hypocrites. Big in their own mind. Not in yours. Ten. So here's basically what Angel responded to John when he was trying to worship him with all his overwhelming uh, thoughts that he had, right? So then he said at nine, we just need to finish this. Mm -hmm. He's saying of this book, worship God, right? So right. by the way, he said, don't bow to worship God. me. You bow to God, you worship to God. And 10. And he saith unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. All I've ever heard preachers say is seal it. We don't need it. He's telling you right here in black and white, the word of God. And he saith unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. In other words, get into it. Get into it. Um, digest it. Mm -hmm. Do anything you can with, this, with the uh, Smiths, right? Bible dictionary, the Strong's Concordance. You get the, a companion Bible, and in the back you have 150 appendixes that are awesome, totally awesome, talking about stuff you've never even thought about. That's what you got to do. Dig in. Study to show yourself approved. That's right. Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust. I thought we were supposed to save everybody. You're not going to save everybody. If God can't save them, how are you going to save them? And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. It's a choice, good and bad. It's so interesting. This particular verse, like for me, it's one of the revealing verses in the entire Bible, I should say. I mean, it sounds very, um, should I say, very bold, right, to say that. But it's true. Because if you think about it, if we learn how to accept all the people at any time and any circumstances, living their life and trying to bring their soul to the level of God, that life would be so much better. Because there are people, right? We, we don't have to affiliate ourselves with everybody. However, every single person, as good, as bad, as ugly, as what is exactly what is saying here, and just still, feels still, whole is still, righteous, not, not righteousness, they came to this second earth age to fulfill uh, their their goal because everybody trying to ask him right so why am i here what am i doing right so am i uh, getting up uh, in the morning and going to work and come back from work and i'm going to sleep and every day the same like others Okay, for example, and then I'm going to college and then I'm getting married and then I have kids and I have grandkids and then I die. What is my purpose? Well, right. the purpose is basically here. It's saying that we come to the second earth age to improve the condition of our soul, to get closer to God as close as we possible. 
to be able to sustain his vibration and his energy in a third earth age to be with him in eternity. How are we going to achieve? Well, you can go to the cave and you can live in a cave or you can live by rule of society or you can, um, you can do anything else with your life, right? And we're going to talk about this a little bit later, what happens with people that have huge talents because they're the biggest influencers. Right. They influence soul of people and then their free choice and free will, what they're going to do with soul of many, many people. Because right. they they given power and authority to use their talent to take people in a different direction and bring them to the level of higher or lower according to what they do and according to the power given to them. Think about it. What a responsibility, right? What what a power given those people that that basically with their behavior, with their action, they control masses of souls. And those souls get in effect by them and going away from God or closer to God. So um, that's what what's the all about all this thing is about. That's why you're here on this earth. Right. And that's the only reason why you're here. And not you're not uh, here to uh, let's say you're here as architect and you create these beautiful buildings. Well, those beautiful buildings will affect souls of people. Right? right, and then it doesn't matter exactly what you're doing. As soon as, with your action, remember you're going to be charged, judged according to your works. As soon as your action will affect either your soul or so, soul the people that you, um, you in relation with while you're doing your work, what you're doing right. is affecting in a positive way, on the way that God is expecting us to be. That's, that's basically it. That's why you're here. You're not here to solve some kind of strange equations and became, you know, in the book of uh, Genesis. That's right. not why you're here. I received Nobel Prizes, right? It's not about that. Right. It's about your soul and soul of others that you affect them. Right. And here it is. Right. Because it, it ties in with, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, do great works? Lord, Lord, did we not heal in your name? Great works, right? Lord, Lord, did we not cast out demons? Great works. What does Jesus say? Awesome. Come on in. No. Depart from me. I never knew you. What? Well, that doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense. What about the Word of God? What happened to the Word of God? Well, I was so busy, right? Our church doesn't go for the Word of God. We go for traditions of men. That's too bad. And by the way, you're so busy, you don't have time for the Word of God. Well, you read the Word of God, guess what? You're going to start slowing down a little bit. You're going to have time to slow down. You're going to have time to relax. It's not going to be this hustle, bustle. Am I going to make it through the next month with myself, with my family, emotionally, mentally, financially? You yeah. get to know God, and guess what? His burden is what? Light. His yoke is easy. And what? You find rest. What kind of rest? God rest. God peace. Of which there is no other. Peace and rest. Yeah, you're no longer wondering, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? Right. right? Why? Because as you study Word of God, um, it clarifies what is important. And then you go with this Word of God in your everyday life, in your everyday relationship, and suddenly things are very different. You see things in different light. You see things in different way on, through the eyes of Jesus, through the eyes of God. And that is what is incredible. The, right. That how you feel this help on everyday life. Not just once you went to church and you listen, um, listen um, one hour service and you're done with it, right? No. You leave, like Don said, uh, Christianity is reality. How you approach this, how you approach to what? To everything. To, to your family, to your pets, to your neighbors, to your uh, uh, co workers. Everything and everywhere you go in by seeing God and you, you go in, in His light, in, in the light of Jesus. Well, why? Because, well, we never saw God, right? right. Father, but we saw Son. And we know how he uh, show us the way the thing should be done. 
and we should do the same way. That's just a perfect example for us because apparently when we received Ten Commandments, we didn't get any of that, right? So right. God said, okay, well, now I have to do something. And here it is. So if after that you cannot understand how to live your life and after reading the book, well, read again. I mean, if it's still not clear, well, let's do it together. Let's study, let's understand, and let's lighten up our life through the light of God, through understanding of His Word. Because nothing can be more clear than that. Right. Because if this is not clear, there's nothing is. Right. You don't have to look for things. You know, like in our days, it's so people looking for things. You know, oh, the book of the secret. You know, or this guy said this, and there's astrology and numerology, and the, <laughs> it's all here. That's the interesting thing. And numerology, and astrology, <laughs> and the book of the secret is all them ologies. here, because this is the main. This is the wisdom, right? And the rest of the things that people created, they come up with, they based on this book. So if you know this book, you don't need to know anything else. So let's work on this, right? Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, um, we didn't go to church, me and my parents. But when I was about four or five years old, a man of the cloth came to our house and told my dad, big guy, <laughs> told my dad, you know, you got to raise your kid in the church, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay, we started going to church, right? Went to church uh, until I was 16. And then my dad and my mom said, we're out of here, mm -hmm. right? We never liked it in the first place. We never talked to anybody in the church. We went to church. At first, it was like an hour. That was killer. Mm -hmm. I think they shortened it to 45 minutes because they knew everybody hated it so much, right? That's your religion? <laughs> That's your God? You know, you study with us, right? You get to the place where God, this is getting so boring, I'm just gonna turn it off. We're getting more and more, <laughs> not members, what do you call them? Like subscribers. Subscribers. We're getting more and more subscribers all the time. Why? Because we're so boring? Because it's so boring? No, because it's so awesome. And we haven't even scratched the surface, right? The Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting through the joints and the marrow, the soul and the spirit, right? The Word of God is unbelievable. It's so awesome. What's going on? Some kind of disconnect here with the churches, right? Some kind of big disconnect. Well, they remember where two of you, Jesus said, I'm with you. So right. do you have to go in that uh, huge big building with millions of people or hundreds of people sitting right. there? No. In and out like cattle? No, you don't. Hey, we have five services today. You need to leave. The, <laughs> right? The, the, what happened to the fellowship? There is no fellowship. Leave. You paid your money. You heard your sermon. Get out. Next are coming in. Now, they're not that graphic but that's what it is and right. that's that's the truth and um, so the point is uh, just remember that your church is you with God and is it us or just you and God and Bible or it, it doesn't matter nothing matters as soon as you keep God word in your life that's what your church that's right. what it's church about now, why it's important there's a two or more, because it has to be back and forth um, study together. You know, it's totally different when you do together with your spouse, you do together with your friend uh, or friends, you're doing together with someone significant that in the same way with you. It makes excited, it makes interesting. You ask questions to each other, you clarify, and it's like, what about this? Uh, can we go this? Let, let's look at the dictionary. Let's look uh, back in Old Testament. Let's see what it says. Uh, so it makes this, I think, more alive right. if you're doing with someone that is special to your heart. Uh, but other than that, that's basically all what you need. Right. Yeah. It's we're two or more gathered right now. Me and Natasha are two gathered, and you, right? Now we know there's at least three. Right? Mm -hmm. What is that? It's church. Wait a minute, where's the building? Where's all the crosses? Where's all the statues of saints? Where's all the pews? Where's it? That's not church. Those are buildings and pews and statues. Right? This 
is church. You're in church right now. Like it or not, believe it or not. Why? Two or more are gathered when in you, His name. When you study the Word of God. How awesome is that? Isn't this fun? It's so simple though too. Isn't that huh? nice? Isn't it cool? You can turn it off anytime, right? And go do your thing, right? Yeah. You can drive in the car and you can You can be driving in the car and listening. Yep, on the way back home. You can let us put you to sleep at night. <laughs> I'm sure we can do a good job at that. <laughs> I listen to Arnold Murray all the time. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no offense, Arnold. I'm <laughs> Dennis. Okay. Okay, and 12. All right. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You know, when you're in a romantic relationship, right, and you, you bring your wife some flowers, which I haven't done lately. <laughs> I have to get on that. <laughs> or a little bottle of wine, whatever it is, and we're going to have a nice time. How does she feel? She lights up. <laughs> you light up my life. Bring her a little dime. Bring her a little anything. What? Why? You're giving. You're giving. You're showing love. What does this say Jesus is going to do? I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. He loves you. What does he want to do? Give a gift. Give a reward. Now, on the other hand, <laughs> what about the men that aren't so good? They're going to get their reward too. That's not going to be pretty. Right? right. It works both ways. Two-way street. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You ever wonder where God came from? He just did. <laughs> he just did. I am. Moses said, who should I tell him? Mm -hmm. Right? He's sending me. I am. You are what? I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the beginning. I am the end, and thank God it didn't, it didn't uh, go into Satan's hands. Thank God God is God and he's good. Imagine if Satan was God, the true God. I don't think any of us would ever know it, right? He'd kill us all too soon. <laughs> Not bless, curse. And 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates, into the city. How do you get in? A ticket? No. You know somebody? No. The commandments. You obey the commandments of God. And what are the commandments of God? They're not burdensome to those who love Him. They're not burdensome. They're your life. I heard a um, DJ say one time, Oh, yeah, the only problem with the Ten Commandments is it's a bunch of don'ts. No, it's a bunch of do's to be holy. Yeah, well, obviously, oh, it's a bunch of don'ts like you can't murder, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dang, what a bummer. I wanted to murder somebody, and now I can't. You know, people are, you know, whack. Hey, they got, remember, they got two brains. One's lost. The other one's out looking for it, right? <laughs> What's up here? Nothing. Nothing spiritual. They have no clue. Mm -hmm. Okay, the commandment, okay. 14. Mm -hmm. Which one? Still 14. 14. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, to Jesus Christ, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Gates will never be closed in the new Jerusalem. For without are dogs and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. See, now again, obviously, right now, we're back on earth. Why? Because that's going to happen now. It's not in heaven. We're not anymore in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, okay? John is back on earth. And they're just reminding you what kind of people make it and what kind of people don't. Black and white right here. Idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. 
I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. Direct lineage from King David came who? I think it was 14 generations later. I think from Adam to David was 14 generations. And from David to Jesus is 14 generations, which is awesome, right? Of David and the bright and morning star and the spirit in the bride say, come and let him that heareth say, come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. H2O? No, spiritual water. Have you ever been really, 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 really thirsty? You know, we've all been hungry. I couldn't wait to eat. See, the thing with food is you can go a pretty long time without food. You can't go a pretty long time without water. Why? Because it's life. Water gives life. How are you going to raise your animals? There's no water. How are you going to plant your plants? There's no water, right? Ghost towns all over the United States, right? Why are they ghost towns? No water. The well out in the middle of nowhere, the well dried up. What do you do? Leave quick. Why? You're going to die. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. There's new translations on the Bible. I won't name any, but you better be aware. They've been translated by the Kenites, the children of Cain, Cain, the child of the devil, right? Adam and Eve and Satan created Cain and Abel. Cain was Satan's son, right? What did Cain do? Murder his brother, right? You got to be careful. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. You don't need to you don't need to read Revelation, really. You just left life. You just left your eternal life. You better think again, preacher. You better think again, priest. Yeah, this is super strong, right? Super strong. So black and white, God. So, so just one one more time we have to read this, right? So if any man will take any part of uh, written in this book so it means every single part and what we're trying to do again it's verse by verse sentence by sentence word by word right so we're not taking parts we're just going exactly through the entire book not taking away any parts because every single part is super important right yeah when yeah. it comes to new bibles new and improved nowhere near it new and distorted, new and deceiving, and new and wicked. And twin. He which testifieth these things saith, surely I come quickly. Well, it's been 2,000 years. Well, to God a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. It's been two days <laughs> to God, right? That ain't long. And your life, let's say you live 100 years. Wow, I lived a long time. What's that to God? He's watched literally hundreds of generations come and go. Come and go. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And that's it. And that's that. That's that. Hey, our next session is going to be question and answer. That's going to be fun. All the questions you guys have, hey, 
We're going to try to answer as many as we can, right? Yeah. That's going to be a good time. And again, we thank you so very much for being strong and carrying along with us to the end of the book of Revelation, one of the most magnificent book that finalized the Bible. And after um, questions and answer session, we're going to start all over again, going to back to Genesis and see the key words in every chapter, in every sentence, in every verse. They will open up the incredible and divine play, uh, plan of God to every soul on this earth. And so far we have 7.8 billion of, right. of souls. Just, a lot of people. just right here on earth. Forget the ones right. that already with God. The, the, yeah. the, um, the harvest is ripe and ready. The laborers are few. Pray the Lord sends laborers into the harvest. That's what we're trying to do, right? And we thank you so much again. Hey, and we began at the last, and now we're going to the beginning, right? We did a little backwards, but still, uh, Genesis, awesome book. Awesome, awesome. So All God, right. God bless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be fun. All right, over and out. <laughs>